welcome, 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 welcome to Intro to Google Chrome. It's one of those classes where you don't think you need it until you see all of the amazing information and the stuff you can do with Chrome. And then you're like, oh, that's why we had a class on Chrome. So you see Sarah's Twitter handle and my Twitter handle right at the top. Go ahead and follow us and tweet at us if you're watching it live or if you're watching it on YouTube. If you are watching it on YouTube, if you go right under this video and click um, on show more where the description is, you'll be able to get the resource for, for this class. So right under the video where the description is, click show more and you'll be able to get the resource. The only people that get a CEU, CLU certificate are people that watch us live. This is my contact information. I am Dr. Desiree Alexander. I'm so happy to be your host today. These are all of the various ways that you can contact me. So you can take a picture of this if you would like. Um, I do visit schools and all that good stuff, but there you go. And even if you're like, hey, Desiree, sing me to Sarah. I'm fine with that too. Let me know I will get you to Sarah if you're looking for her because she is an amazing presenter. So some upcoming webinars that we have, and we're going to stay off camera today. We're going to stay off camera. So some uh, upcoming webinars that we have, only one more, guys. I know, tears, tears. Friday, is that next Friday? Yes, next Friday, uh, July 24th will be other apps. I know the one that has been requested over and over again is Google Sites. So she will definitely talk about Google Sites, but some other apps as well. And then we have the intro to Zoom and Google Meet. That's actually Wednesday next week. Okay, good to know. Um, I'll be teaching the intro to Zoom and Google Meet. And then we have diversity, equity, and inclusion in library communities that Friday. So we have three next week. Woo, lots of free webinars. And then we have on August 1st, classroom management and beyond. And then misinformation in the information age. I feel like we should teach that every single day, but there you go. And then we have templates for teachers. Sour's coming back with Beth. We cannot wait. And that will um, be in September. And of course, like I said, we have some more coming up, coming up, coming up. So keep an eye on that website. All of them can be found at that website. Summer camp for pre-K through third grade, free for educators. Could you get some months free to Kids Academy? So definitely check that out on my website. The United Ed Tech Conference is this weekend. It is $15. It's a $15 donation because all of the money that we raise will go towards an educational nonprofit. You can learn about this more on the website. Then we have the Rethink Learning Summit next week. Oh, so much going on next week. It's going to be awesome. Um, so I am presenting at the Rethink Learning Summit, so definitely check that out. And then we have LeQ Cares. LeQ is the Louisiana Association um, for Computer Using Educators. So it's kind of the Louisiana, was well, not kind of, it's the Louisiana Technology um, group and they're having free trainings the 23rd and the 24th i'll be presenting on the 23rd you can find out some more information about that on my website and then we have the indiana connected educators and that is july 24th 20th through 24th completely free that will also be more information on my website and then i am going to be doing a virtual ed camp with irving isd and well not irving isd i think it's the um Education Center, Region 10 Education Center. Um, it is free for people in the Region 10. So you see, I have free and paid, but it's paid for everyone else. Um, but I think it's like $20 or something. So look into that. I'll be there. All this information is on my website at that link that you see at the bottom, at alex.net slash events. That's why I don't spend too much time on it. And last but not least, ELA. If you're an ELA teacher, we're going to be talking about distance learning to strengthen ELA instruction. We also have the regular distance learning coming up again as well. But for August 3rd, 6th, and 7th, that is what that is. At the end, we will do an evaluation, and we'll talk about that a little bit more at the end. And that's just for people who are watching us live. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so Sarah can pick it on up. I'm going to look in the chat and see if I have any um, questions. 
I don't think you can make a copy of the slide. It's just there for your, um, for your resource. So as long as you can get to it, you will be good to go. Oh, well, Sarah already answered that. Look at me just saying stuff. And Inky wanted to let you know that LaQ, that Louisiana Computer Using Educators, that Louisiana group is free. The membership is free. So definitely keep that in mind. Okay, guys, I'm going to shut my face, put questions in the chat, and Sarah, take it away. All right, hello, hello. I'm going to reshare like my whole screen because I clicked the wrong one. Sorry. Um, so, hello um, for number seven. Let us know in the chat how many of you have been here for all of them. I'm always cu kind of curious. I see a lot of very familiar names. Uh, super excited that everyone has come back. Uh, and if you're new, welcome. This is a great group. Desiree's going to man the chat like always, and she'll pop in with questions. Um, just like all of the other ones, I do have the resource built out to where if we run out of time, maybe because of questions or maybe because I go off on these tangents and I just get really super excited about it, I do try to pre-package this resource with either some help sites that you can visit or some videos that are that I created to help you better understand what that particular part of, of today Chrome is gonna be about. And as always, like Desiree said, reach out to us, tweet at us. I love seeing that on Twitter. I love getting the emails. Hey Sarah, can you help me figure this out? Or you mentioned doing such and such, can you help me? I, I absolutely love doing that. I know that that makes me, I, I tell people all the time, I'll happily accept the title of nerd. Um, it just, I love helping teachers because I really do believe, and that's my motto up here, tech you can do, you can do this. It might take a couple of minutes, it might take a couple of tries, but you, you can do this. And Desiree and I talk all the time about, we started somewhere. Our journey just maybe started a few years before yours. So we might appear like we have all of the answers, but I can tell you, Mary that's here today, she's taught me something in here. Uh, Desiree and I have talked about like I've taught her stuff. She's taught me stuff. We've worked through problems together. This is such a great PLN, a professional learning network. It's a great community to be a, to be a part of. Lean on each other. Ask questions. We were talking at the end of the last one, I think, about how if you never ask questions, you'll never find out the answers. So use us. Reach out to us. My website has my email on it. It's also just real simple, Sarah at Tech You Can Do. Email me, I'll get back to you, I promise. A um, little bit of background about me, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time. I am a, currently a technology integration specialist for the Ross Local Schools here northwest of Cincinnati, Ohio. I've been doing this for about four years. Prior to that, I was a classroom teacher for about 14 years and all at the middle school. So seven years in fifth grade and then seven years at seventh and eighth grade social studies. And then I accepted the technology integration position and I was shifted down to the elementaries. So I currently split my time between two different buildings. As it stands now, we're going back. Some of you that are going back earlier probably will help inform our decisions better about what we do, still talking through all of that kind of stuff. But honest and truly, like Desiree said, Chrome might be the spot where you, you don't really think that you need it or you might think that you know it, right? And you have that, oh, I don't really need to learn. Like, I'm going to do other things. And clearly today, since you're joining us, maybe you're, you're interested in leveling up on this, learning something new. I hope that I can show you some ways to make your Chrome browser function a whole lot nicer and a whole lot more efficiently. So Desiree and I are connected because I went to... I had the honor of attending the Google Innovator Academy back in October, and Desiree is my innovator coach. So she's been helping me through this process and through various ways like we've been connecting and we have been doing this webinar series. This is part seven. We have one left, and I actually messaged Desiree yesterday and I said, what are we gonna do? Like, I'm not gonna see you twice a week, you know, for a couple hours. Um, so. Thank you for everybody with your time that you've given to us. Thank you, Desiree, big time on giving me this opportunity. And with that, pop your questions into the chat. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. 
There's a nice little cover screen with some information on it. You can always come back. Uh, the navigation window does show up on this one. That was Mary's little tip. She showed me how I can get rid of it. I still just am giddy over that, Mary. So I'm gonna move forward. And you might be sitting here and asking yourself, or maybe you've asked yourself these questions. Why would I use Chrome? My response would honestly be, why not? Why not? It, like it's, it's part of the Google atmosphere. It's part of the ecosystem. Everything that Google puts out works really nicely. It's all integrated together. It's all Google. So it's all gonna work very nicely together. There are a few other reasons why you might choose to use Chrome over other browsers. It's a pretty fast system. It does do auto updates. We'll talk about that a little bit. It does sync across devices. So if this computer's battery were to die and I was in the middle of something, maybe I didn't have my charger cord, I could open up and get on a different computer. And as long as I'm logged into that Chrome account, I would be able to pick right up. When I'm face-to-face -face in instruction and I'm talking with teachers about it, I always make sure like, are you logged into your Chrome account? And they're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And we maybe discover they are or they aren't. And then, you know, well, why does that matter? And I always give them this analogy. So maybe you get mad one day and you take your computer and you chuck it out into traffic. And a semi comes along and runs over it and destroys your computer. Maybe five, 10 years ago, you'd have a panic attack and say, I've just lost everything. But if you use Chrome, and therefore then the, the other Google pieces like Drive and Docs and Slides, so on, you haven't, because it's all stored in Google, and that's you know in the cloud. So I could give you a different computer, you could log into your Chrome account, your bookmarks are gonna be there, saved passwords are gonna be there, your startup pages, your home pages, like everything will be there because you've saved it in your Chrome account. So that's what I mean when it says sync across devices. I could even log in on my, my phone and still be able to see the tabs that I've got open on other devices. Just something to think about. If you are not already sold on Chrome, I'm hoping to giving you a little sales pitch here. And then obviously, just like I like to demonstrate with a lot of the other things is you can customize Chrome. You know, and we might be talking about colors, folders, emojis, icons, we might be talking about a few of those things. So stay tuned, stick with me here. So here we go, here are eight different things that I've got built into this, along with up here in the top right, resources. That's always at the, at the tucked in at the very end, I'll give you links to the help communities, maybe to particular people who are very strong in Chrome, links to my wakelets. I love wakelets as a means to collect PDFs and images and websites and all kinds of things all together about a particular topic. I always share the wakelets. Um, again, Wakelet is a, a free extension application and um, web site that you can go to and you can use as well. And beyond that, we're going to kind of jump around. I have them numbered here just so that I could give you the, the names for them. Okay. And I, I do try to come up with I, I, I use the official names, right? But some of them don't necessarily have official names, like the world's skinniest snowman. That's my personal favorite. Um, today we're gonna to talk about the stoplight. And once you start seeing this, especially because I do truly believe most of us are teachers, if not all of us are teachers, kids will respond to that. I think more and more people, teachers and students and parents, are all becoming very visual people. So if you can describe especially shout out to my elementary peeps, to the little ones, they may not understand words like vertical or horizontal or diagonal. They may not understand that just yet. But if you can describe like the stoplight, all of them probably know what a stoplight is. Or you could say the red, yellow, and green dots. My favorite is when they come into the computer labs and we tell them to go ahead and open up Chrome, I tell them to look for, I call it a beach ball. I tell them to look for the beach ball that's on their screen. You know, for us, it's sitting down in the dock, so they find the beach ball and they click on it, and it starts to bounce, right? Just like a ball does. So if you can give them those kind of visual descriptors, tag in with that what it is. Don't just say, look for the beach ball. Okay, we're gonna open up Chrome, and let's look for the beach ball. Look how it bounces. Yep, that's Chrome opening up. So you can kind of like layer those pieces in, and then they're already hearing it, and then as they grow, it just becomes natural lingo.
to them. So the way I have it set up is you could either click on the number with the name or you can come up and you can click on the colored outlines for that space. And what I did to build this today was I literally took a screenshot of the Chrome browser that I use and I've identified these different pieces. Don't take the size of the rectangles as their, their power or their abilities to do this. And some of them we're gonna kind of breeze through pretty quickly. Some of them we're gonna spend a lot more time on. And this is one truly where ask your questions in the chat and Desiree will pop them out to me because sometimes the way that I look at things, other teachers have asked me questions and I always am trying to anticipate this, but I wanna make sure that this is a truly valuable two hours of time for you. So Desiree, I'm gonna ask you any initial questions or has anybody mentioned that they want to really start or jump in at a particular spot? Cause I'm happy to go in whatever order everybody would like to go in. No, I think we are good to go. Okay, so then I'm going to start. We will just follow you, leader. Oh, I'm I'm not an expert. I've used it a lot. Um, I, I I learn about it. I constantly read about it. So if if you have tips or tricks, pop them in the chat. Like, let's share. Let's make this valuable for everybody. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just start with number one. So that's the stoplight. I think it's kind of cute to call it the stoplight because it is red, yellow, and green. It's not, you know, standing up, it's laying down, but we'll go with it, the stoplight, because it's actually fairly simple. It's, it's easy to understand. Um, I've got a little video down there talking about updating Chrome, which kind of goes along with it. I'll get there. All right, so the red circle, obviously, I think we're all probably fairly comfortable with this. If we click that red circle, it's gonna close down our window. You can kind of see behind here that I have another window open just to kind of give you this comparison. So if I were to close this, which I'm not going to, because I understand that's the whole presentation, right? So it would take it all away, it would close it. It's not going to close the window behind it. I could open additional tabs up here. And if I have multiple tabs up there and I click that red, it's gonna close all of them. But again, this is a different window. So keep those two things in mind. You're just closing down this particular window. And I have a little note down here because a lot of teachers have the misconception that that is actually quitting Chrome. It's not, those are two very different things. So the big difference is when you just close out your window, you're, you're literally just closing the window. If you quit Chrome, the next time you open it up, I always explain that you're opening up a fresh window which the way Chrome is built also is intended to help keep you up to date. So if you're constantly just clicking this red button, over time, your Chrome is going to get further and further behind with its updates. And if you remember at the very beginning, I said one of the benefits of using Chrome is that it auto updates. It auto updates when you quit Chrome. Now the difference being, click the red dot, that window closes. To quit Chrome, on mine, the, the little task bar is all the way up at the very top. So I'm gonna click on Chrome up here and then I'm going to click quit Chrome. That will completely close down everything with Chrome. It, it turns, kind of like turns it off. And then the next time I open up Chrome and my little Chrome beach ball bounces, it's a whole fresh session and I'm up to date. And that's the big difference between closing your window and quitting Chrome. And you're gonna say, wow, Sarah, you just spent like two minutes talking about, believe me, it makes a difference. 99, no, 95% of the time, when I have students come to me with issues with their computer, or a teacher says, something's not acting right, I can't do this, or it, it, it looks funny, or this isn't loading, 95% of the time when we quit Chrome and we open it fresh, it, it, it solves all of our problems. Sorry, my dogs, I apologize. Um, so then in the, in the middle, this yellow button, again, think about our stoplight, the red completely closes, the yellow minimizes, 
um, which just means it's going to pull it down. For me, it's going to go down to the um, bottom to the task bar. So that's in the middle. So that's minimizing. It's not closing it, but it's taking it off of my viewing screen. It helps when I need to get to the window behind it, or I need to use a different application. It, that the yellow button works great. If you're a person that likes to have multiple windows open, like myself, it also helps too that you don't have 25 windows open and then it's a problem. And then finally, this little green button. I am gonna demonstrate this one. It's going to maximize. And you might look at my screen and say, well, Sarah, you've already maximized your screen. And I'll say, well, kind of. And this does, for some teachers, if they're not aware of this, this does sometimes um, freak them out a little bit. But if you click that green button, it's gonna take away everything else. Like you only see my Chrome browser now. You don't see that taskbar at the top. You don't see the stuff on the sides. So I really have maximized my screen when I click this green button. And notice like now you can't even see the red, the yellow, and the green. You can't even see the stoplights. But have no fear, it's still there. Just push your cursor back up to the top and it'll pop back for you. And then if you're ready to not minimize, because that would pull it down to the bottom, right? Like it just makes it smaller, it goes back to like normal. Notice now how the triangles change. They change and now they're facing inward. If you click on it, it now brings you back to your, what I would refer to as your regular screen. So if you want to take a minute to practice doing that, if you're in the full screen of Zoom, you might want to hit the ESC key, the escape key on your keyboard to take you out of the full screen view of Zoom, and then you'll be able to better see this with your Chrome browser. So if you want to take a minute, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, if you look up here, I've created the top part on, on here to also be interactive. So we don't have to keep going back to the table of contents to that home page. Um, I've got the Chrome window clipped up there at the top so we can move on to the one right next door, unless there's questions, but I'm sure Desiree, you'll jump in, right? Sure will. Okay, so we're gonna move on to tabs. I am a self-professed tabaholic. I have a lot of tabs open on my windows most of the time. I most of the time have multiple windows open with multiple tabs. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it. Please don't judge me. I, I just like my tabs. I like keeping them open. I like having quick access to stuff. You might be that kind of a person too. Now, it does look a lot nicer if you don't, but for tabs up here, so these are just individual websites that you're at. Um, I have a new tab open here. I could open up a new tab here and maybe I want to go to, what was that website Desiree was talking about? Techyoucando.com. Oh, that's my website. You know, type it in, there you go. And then you can jump back to the presentation and then you still have quick access to that other website that you opened up. Now, the more and more tabs that you open up, the smaller and smaller they get. It also does tend to make your computer run a little bit slower. So if you have like 25, 30 tabs open up, you might notice a difference in the speed of how quickly things load or how quickly you can navigate to the next page or go backwards and things like that. So that is something to keep in mind. Now, as a teacher, I always like to give you some little tricks. I always think about putting them in like my back pocket and my little teacher bag of tricks. If you're ever in a classroom face to face and you, your kids are working on their Chromebooks, um, seventh and eighth grade, like I go back into my seventh and eighth grade world. You know, they're working independently and I'm circulate, circulating around the room and I'm helping this student and then I'm helping that student. And then my eye catches students that are maybe looking a little suspicious. You know, so I wander over and then all of a sudden, like they don't have any tabs open or they only have one tab open or they're quickly like closing out of tabs because they don't want to get caught doing something off task. Okay, so here's my little tip. It's this right here with the red star. You can reopen recently closed tabs. If you use this keyboard shortcut, Control Shift T. It's really nice. 
So if you're on a Mac, it's command shift T, but for kids on their Chromebooks, I would use this all the time. Like, well, you know, well, where were you? Oh, I wasn't anywhere. I was, I was doing my work. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So here's where you can use technology to help support you. And I wouldn't say to hammer them or to, you know, do heavy discipline or whatever, but it also does kind of demonstrate to the kids that you're going to hold them accountable. So here's, here's an example. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close this tab. You know, maybe you came over real quick and I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have had that open. I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut, control shift T, voila, it's back. Isn't that wonderful? Now here's a, a, an additional tip. You can hit control shift T numerous times. Now I'm not going to say that it's going to work for everything for as long as their history is available to you, but it will work for like the relative recent point in time. And it also works really well if you do have a whole lot of tabs open and you accidentally close out a tab that you wanted or that you really needed to keep control shift T control shift T control shift T. And I'll give you another little tip while we're at it. I used to have post-it notes when I was like at a central location. Now that I'm between two buildings, I don't, I don't necessarily have this ability at a desktop. I do use post-it notes on the corners of my laptops. Get a post-it note, jot down some of these little shortcuts that you really like. And I would keep a little post-it note right there on my, uh, I'm, I'm touching my, my keyboard and you can't see that, but put a little post note there. If you have a little notebook that you always keep handy, start writing down these little keyboard shortcuts right in that little notebook, just to keep them right there for quick reference. The more you use them, the easier they become. Love that keyboard shortcut for myself, but also remember putting your little teacher bag of tricks. Um, I also have this little tip down here and this kind of deals with the extensions, which we'll get to shortly. There's an extension out there and I heard about it recently. So I'm not a regular user. I'm not somebody that's been using this shortcut or this extension for a long time, but it's the extension called tab resize. It's amazing. So I even watched and tucked in the little video right here. He has different configurations as to how you can restructure and lay out the tabs that you have open on your computer. It's not going to work real great if you're on a very small computer, like a small Chromebook or something. But if you're on a bigger laptop or you're on a desktop, this tab resize is going to work very nicely. This one right here, this one by two is fantastic. If you're a Google Classroom user and your grades aren't syncing, uh, what I would always do is I would have my, the, where I had my grades, I had used Schoology at the time. So I'd have that open on one half of my screen and I would have progress book, which is our grade book open on the other half. And I would have the students' names and their grades listed side by side. So I never kept a paper, uh, paper grade book any longer. So I'd, I'd have them half and half. But at the time, because this extension wasn't around, I had to physically have my little tabs, which is not a bad tool to be able to use, but this tab resize, he's got two by two here, a two by one, a one by two. In the video, he even says that you can customize what you want those tabs to look like. Amazing, right? So keep those couple of things in mind and that could be an extension that we wrap back around to after we finish this out. Okay. Now the other thing that I wanna point out about uh, closing out tabs or reopening tabs, you can also see the browsing history, which means the all of the information that you've done prior on, on your Chrome browser. And that doesn't mean just today. And it doesn't mean just for this fresh session. It will actually timestamp it for you. And you find that in the world's skinniest snowman up here. You see it, this is just the picture of it. If I wanted to on this account, I could click on the world's skinniest snowman here, and then I would click on the history. And then you notice it gives you this pop-out menu. Now I took this from one of my other devices so that you can also see if you look closely where it says recently closed, it actually has kind of like a little um, screen there. So these are the, the websites that I had open. If I clicked on recently closed, it would give me a listing of the websites that I had already closed. And then if you notice down here, it shows you a whole different device and a third one down even further. 
So it's actually giving me the history of this is my school computer, this is my personal computer, and then this is my phone. I've logged into my account on all three devices. So even though I'm on my personal computer, I can still see my history on the other computers because I've logged into that same account. It's really, really helpful if you have a, a desktop at school, but you work on a different computer at home because you're not lugging that thing home, you don't have to worry about sending yourself the emails with the, you know, check out these three websites or what have you. You can just pull up your history as long as you're logged into your Chrome account. Okay? So that's the, probably the next area that we should focus on. You've got your browsing history, you've got how to open up tabs, talked a little bit about extensions, and then you've got your tabs up here. Oh, one last thing about tabs. This is, this is fun. This is just for fun, and you're probably not gonna find too many uses for it, but you can actually put your tabs in different orders. So I can take this new tab, and I can drag it to the right, or I can take this tab, and I can drag it to the left. You can put them in whatever order that you would like. That's just a, a very small, but sometimes very helpful if you wanna keep four tabs together and these two tabs together over here. It might just be something that uh, helps you out, be a little bit more efficient. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk about how do you even know if you're logged in? Okay, Sarah, I know how to open it, I know how to close it, I know the difference between quitting Chrome and just quitting my window, um, tabs and all that kind of stuff, checking your browsing history, works across multiple devices, if you're logged in, right? So you see this T up here and it hover over it and it actually has a name. If you don't see that T and you just see a random person, like a little gray blob, that's not somebody that's probably logged in unless they've chosen that as their profile picture. I am going to go to my second window that I have open so you can see the difference. So right here you can see me because I have chosen this picture of me as my profile picture. So I can see and when I hover over it, I can see my name. So it tells me that that's my Sarah account. And this one is my test one account. These are two different people, okay? So when you hover over that icon up here, if you don't see a name, whether it's your name, it's somebody else in your household's name or whoever had been logged in on this device, that's where you need to start. And that's where we are going to go back to. So I'm gonna click on the profile picture down here with the yellow square around it, because uh, we're gonna talk about profile pictures. Okay, so that profile image up there, which it can be any number of things. Like I've customized it on some, I've left it very generic on this one. You can customize it. Um, students can, or that might be something that's restricted. So again, all of these things that we, or most of these things that we talk about, do have some kind of a component where it's possible, some of them are more likely than not, that can be restricted. So if, if I'm showing something and you say, well, Sarah, I can't do that on my account, that might be something that your school domain has decided to prevent you from being able to do. So when I click on my purple T up here, this is the best way that you can use a device for multiple people and not worry about what I refer to as account contamination, like things get crossed and, well, I thought I had that, I know that I created that, and then you come to find out that it's in somebody else's account or you can't find it any longer and you do some digging around and you find, oh, I made that in my personal account, not my school account, or I made it in school account, not my personal account. It might be a result of multiple profiles being mixed together. So here is one of the most amazing things that you can do with Chrome, is keep everything separate. I think of it this way. When I am emailing my own daughter's teachers, I want it to come from me from Sarah as mom, right? And when I am doing my, my job, my professional side, I want it to come from me as Sarah Kiefer, technology integration specialist. 
And I do my best to keep those two things separate. Now, am I perfect about that? No, and sometimes things get sent from the other account and I'm not, because I'm not perfect, right? Nobody's perfect. Um, but then I also have a third account because I'm a Google certified trainer. I have a third account that I like to operate a lot of the training out of. So keeping these three things separate allows me to keep things in my personal account. And then I have my school account and then I have my Google trainer account. And it's like all of those various hats that we keep on and we work really hard to try to keep separate and we try to keep them organized, but we're all still the same person. Using these different profiles is the best thing ever, right? So keep that in mind and you can see over here, you're gonna see some sort of profile picture, the name, the email address, uh, syncing is on. I can manage the account for this profile here. And then you can see down here, I have multiple people on here. Remember that webinar that Desiree was talking about? Oh, I didn't mean to open that. Got a little click happy. Um, templates for teachers. That's what I've co-created with Beth Kingsley. She's gonna come back with me on in September and we're gonna show you all about templates for teachers. So what we've done is, so that both of us can be working out of this account, we've created a shared account. So then it's also not getting mixed up with the other things. So it's very much like I'm trying to divide these things for simplicity's sake. Um, you can also browse as a guest this way, and then you can add on additional profiles. And if you were to do that, it's gonna take you to this screen. You could type in who that person might be. And then it's as simple as logging in to Google with the correct Google account. I'm not actually going to add this person on. I just wanted to show you like, that's what it is. And notice it opened up in a whole nother window. So I know that I'm keeping it separate from my test one account because it is a whole nother window. I'm gonna add on a whole nother person. It's very, very helpful, especially when you have shared devices. But also, because we're teachers, teaching is one part of our life, and then we all have our, our home life. So keep those things separate, even if it's something as simple as I can open my email here, and I can open my school email over here. It keeps things very simple and straightforward. I do have a couple of little uh, videos tucked in here. And Casey Bell, who is another awesome Google person, she has a great resource uh, specifically about how you can better manage these profiles. And notice up here too, this option when you click on your profile image, there's that whole manage Google account. Google does like to tuck these things in multiple places. This is one real easy way that you can go in and you can do some management of this. So this would be for this test one student account. Um, but this link right here will take you to uh, a blog about from Casey Bell. She's a really great Google person too. And then for fun, are we ready for some fun? I feel like we've kind of hit some very specific things already. Let's take a little bit of a break. Let's uh, throw in a little bit of color, shall we? I promised you that I would. So Chrome has the ability to do a lot of customization. One way is for themes. So themes, if you were here with us for slides, um, you could have a slide deck that all carry the same theme together. Sheets is new with having themes. So you would pick all this, they would have all the same fonts and the same colors that you would choose from to kind of keep things looking very nice. Chrome also has themes. So to take a break from the big pieces and give you something fun, I really hope that I don't lose you. I hope you stick with me and you don't get too lost on this theme idea. I do have a little video that will walk you through these steps, but we're going to do this together. So I'm going to go to a new tab. I like to go to the Chrome Web Store. So if it shows up right here, great. And if you notice when I hover over it, do you see my little friend, the world's skinniest snowman? Remember what I said about him? He always gives you some options. You can rename it. You can also just remove it if you don't want to see that right here. But it does give you quick access. Otherwise, what I do is I type it in a search. And it is always the, the top result right here. So click on that. 
and it takes you to the Chrome Web Store where you can find extensions and themes. Tuck this away because we're going to come back when we get to extensions. So when we go to themes, you're going to see that here's a chunk together. It's called Published by Chrome. Here's dark and black themes. Here's some space exploration themes, some minimalist themes, and the list goes on and on and on, right? So I'm going to come down here, find the splash of color. So just so that you can get a real good idea of how this changes the look of your Chrome, I'm going to click on this colors, which says it's a colorful splash. So you see, and it even gives you a little bit of a preview of what it will look like when you add this to your Chrome browser. And if you like it, and you go, oh yeah, I don't really kind of like that, okay. So up at the top, you click on Add to Chrome. Let it do its thing. Give it a second, and there you go. It changed it. And you might go, oh, Sarah, like I, I love that. Or you might go, oh, too much, too much. Like now I can't really read this. It really does a number up here. I can't read it very well. If you, if you pay attention and you don't just get real super click happy and get moving too quickly, you can click the undo button right here and it's gonna take it away. Okay, so it's, it's kind of like that control Z shortcut where undoes real quick, but it was that little blue button up there that helps you do that very quickly. I'm gonna keep it off just so that we can see everything very easily up here. You can always come back to themes and you can change it to any number of these. So scroll down, notice that there is a view all button which tells you that it, there's more than just these eight themes in this category. So click on it and you can go through there. One note of caution, a lot of schools restrict the ability to change the theme of Chrome browsers. It's not a problem, I just want you to be aware. You may not be able to do this in your school account. And if that's the case, I want you to take a deep breath and I want you to go, okay, that's one less thing I have to worry about changing or adjusting or customizing. We've talked about this before. It's wonderful to have options, but sometimes when you have too many options, it becomes too much. So if you can't change the theme in your school account, go to your personal account and change it there. And then that also helps you to visually differentiate between personal and school. And that's a great way of using themes to give each account, each profile, its own theme, because then you're telling your brain, you're gonna teach your brain that the, the boring gray is going to be my school account, because that's the one you can't change. But my personal account, you know, maybe you say I really like butterfly, so I'm gonna see if I can find a butterfly theme, or I really like space, so I'm gonna choose one of those space themes, because then when you're in Chrome, it's that additional visual cue to your brain that says, I'm in a certain account. It works really well for those of us that are juggling multiple different um, profiles and ideas and uh, opportunities here. All right, so I'm gonna just leave that open because we might need tabs and stuff again. All right, so let's talk navigation, shall we? Here it's the blue one. And you might go, well, Sarah, this is a this is really simple navigation. Like I got this, right? So it is, it is very simple, but there's one key piece in here that a lot of people overlook and they just kind of like to me. And I say, no, 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 this is this is crazy powerful. Like I really want you to be able to do this. So obviously your left and right arrows, the left means to go back. You can go to the previous site that you were on. And if you've traveled back and forth enough, you're gonna see that that arrow moving forward is going to be a darker gray. And let's go here, you go back, is it gonna, so now I can go back forward and it helps me travel through my history in a way, if you think about it that, um, which is great. This little not quite closed circle is your refresh. So again, sometimes, especially in classroom settings, the websites don't load if everybody's trying to hit them all at the same times. Sometimes there could be like a little hiccup or maybe it just looks kind of funky and you're not sure why. Try the refresh button. It's the little arrow that kind of makes a circle but it doesn't quite close all the way. Love that little button. Now here is the 
piece that I get a lot of like, I don't need to worry about that. It's the little house. I love the little house. It's your home. It's, it's your landing page. It's your, your best friend. It's your most commonly needed and used place. A lot of schools automatically force a page for your home page, but not necessarily. So here's, here's a, here's a thought. Let's go to my tab that's already open. If I click on this house, let's see what happens. Oh, it takes me to my email. So that must be forced to be my homepage. If you say, well, I want to go back to that, those themes, Sarah, let's go back there. Maybe you look at that home button and you say, well, gosh, I mean, that makes sense to have it set as my email. I do use my email a lot. Great. Set your homepage to be your email. Maybe it's your calendar. Maybe it's a particular website. Maybe your district has a website that you go to all the time because that's where you get all of your links. I'm going to use this website, my blog. I'm going to use this and I'm going to set it as my homepage. So in order to do that, we've got to go into our settings, which we've not, we've not covered and we've not gone into real deep, but I'm going to leave this up and we're going to come over to the world's skinniest snowman. And we're going to go down to settings. And I'm going to show you a trick that I really, really, really have come to appreciate because settings is a huge place. If you're trying to find the home page, I'm just going to start typing in, in that search bar, this blue search bar right here. I'm going to start typing in home and Oh, look, it's already popping up. I haven't even spelled the whole word here. See how it shows you home right here. It's currently on. If you see like two little buildings right here next to each other, that means that your domain is forcing something for you. Um, so mine doesn't have that. So I can change this. I can also just turn it off if I wanted to. See, and now the little house doesn't show. So if you're sitting there and you're going, but Sarah, I don't have the house. I don't have the house. Go to your settings, type in home, and turn that little toggle switch back on. Now, mine went to Gmail. And if I say, eh, I, don't, I don't want that, I want it to go to this website. I've got it open, which is really nice. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to copy that, come back to the settings tab, and I'm gonna click in here, I'm gonna get rid of all of this, and then I'm gonna type in the website that I wanted to open when I click that little house. And when I say this to, to the students at school, because they're kindergarten through fourth grade, I always say, go home, go home, click on the home, because that's gonna get them back to our, our main page where they can find all of the links to the things that they need. Um, so I always just click off here to the right to the gray and it kind of like puts it in there for you. You can also click new tab. So every time you click the home button, it just opens up a generic tab for you. But now let's see what happens. If I click on my house, remember before it was taking me to Gmail because that's what I was telling it. But now if I click on that house, it takes me right to this website, not by magic, but because I told it to. And you can literally put whatever site you want in there, right? You could have it go to your, directly to your drive, to your calendar, to your email, whatever you should choose to do. If you've built a website and that's the site that you use to house things for students or to house things for other teachers that you share out and all that kind of stuff, maybe that's the site that you put there as your house. That I believe is a very powerful tool and it kind of complements very nicely the bookmarks bar, which is directly below it. Because in a way, it's, it's like your biggest and most basic bookmark, right? So shall we navigate to our bookmarks bar, which is ringed in green? I'm gonna go there. So our bookmarks bar, it's where you're gonna find any of the sites or the files that you wanted to hold on to and you wanna keep and you want to just have like that one click access to it. You want to get there and you want to just go, boom, there I am. I'm going to hold on to this. I need to make sure that I can come back to this very quickly. So you bookmark it. It's, it's really nice. And again, if you remember what I said at the beginning, something happens to your computer and you're using your Chrome account and you've bookmarked things, you won't lose them if your computer dies. 
you know, if it gets run over, if, if one of your kids spills milk all over it or whatever the disaster is and your computer now is, is dead, pop on another computer, log into your Chrome account, and you've got everything right there at your fingertips. So let's talk about bookmarking here, right? Um, bookmarks are very simple to do. They also have some fun abilities that you can do with them. So let's check this out. So I'm gonna go back to my Chrome Web Store and let's say I wanna do themes, but I'm not ready to do themes. So I need to hold on to this because I'm probably not gonna remember what Sarah said, how to get there. So I've got this tab open and I see right here, my, my URL up here in the Omnibox and I'm gonna go all the way over to the right and I'm gonna find this little star. The star is how you bookmark. It's a one click. That star now has turned blue and you have this little pop out menu right here. Now it's gonna automatically give you some kind of a name that's attached to this website. You don't have to keep it. You don't, you could call it whatever you want. Maybe Chrome Web Store doesn't register up here in your brain. And if you notice, it's already put it on my bookmarks bar and it says Chrome Web Store and that's all. If you hover over it, it gives you more details, but notice how the whole name doesn't show up. And notice how large that name is. So maybe this is a great tip for you. You don't have to go with what they tell you. Over here in the names, because it's already highlighted, I can just delete all of that and maybe I type in themes. And I'm also able to see that I'm gonna keep it on my bookmarks bar and then I'm gonna say done. So now look at that. I've got a little icon here and I have a word themes. It no longer says Chrome Web Store. This is great because teachers a lot of times have all those acronyms rolling around in their brains or maybe they really recognize that icon right there and they don't need to have that full official name for that website. You can shorten it, you can put in your own abbreviations, you can help yourself out. And, you ready for this? This is one of my favorites and I'm gonna give a little shout out to a previous student of mine. Her name was Juliana. I was teaching, so this puts maybe five, six years ago I learned this. And I noticed on her bookmarks bar, she just had all these little icons. She didn't actually have like the names there. And I was like, Juliana, like, what is that? How did you do that? And she kind of looked at me like I had three heads. I'm not, I'm not lying when I say this story. Very smart girl, very sweet girl. She's not one that would ever talk back or I'm mean, just such a sweet girl. And she looked up at me and she goes, I just took the name off of it. And I was like, wait, what? Explain this to me. I said, I love this. So she showed me how she did this. And I was just like, mind blown. I literally stopped class and I had Juliana show everybody how to do this because it was amazing. All right, so here we go. I'm actually going to use this bookmark to take me to Google Classroom. And I think if you've been using Google Classroom, um, I don't know, a handful of times, you probably recognize that little icon. And if you were here on Tuesday, remember I wore my green shirt with the yellow one on top of it. Um, I just have on my Google Innovator shirt today because Chrome is all colors. So I have bookmarked this. You can see that by the blue star. So I'm actually going to click on the blue star and it opens that same window again. And this time notice how it says edit bookmark. And it gives me that same option. Now you, you do have a few options here. You can remove it. Let's say you no longer need it. Get rid of it. Um, if you're happy with it, click done, but watch what happens. I'm just going to delete the name of this whole bookmark. I'm just going to delete it and I'm not replacing with anything, not a space, not a period, not a nothing. I'm, I just deleted the name and I want it gone. And then I'm going to say done. Look back to your left. Look over here. It's just the icon. I love it. Absolutely love it. Love, love, love this tip. If you have a lot of icons that you recognize, maybe Google Drive, right? And you want to, let's go there, Google Drive, go to Drive, and you want to bookmark it, watch what happens. Bookmark, get rid of that big old name, I don't need it, click done, there you go. 
you know the drive triangle. Now when you close out of it, quick access right there to your Google Drive. Love it. I do that for Drive and Calendar and Gmail. Oh, it's wonderful. Those little icons, it's a game changer. Now here's my tip for using these little icons right here. Put them in order. And by order, I should say group them. So the, the, the bookmarks that have the names to them, I like to keep those a little bit more to the right. I like to take all of these icons and I'm just gonna drag and drop it over. I can put them in whatever order I want to. And it's a simple drag and drop. Just do your best to stay up here on the bookmarks bar. But sometimes where people go wrong, they drag them down and just kind of gets a little bit goofy. Um, but you can put them in whatever order you like. Notice that gray um, vertical bar right there. It's telling you it's gonna drop down in between the two icons or you bring it back over here and you leave it there. Amazing, I love it. I absolutely love that little tip. Thank you, Juliana. She's probably off making millions somewhere, I'm not sure. Um, so those are two over of my tips over here. So you've got the, the icon with a name and then you have just the icon and then guess what? Do folders. Yes, you can. You can add folders to your bookmarks bar up here. Because like most teachers, you probably have collections of things that you would like to keep together. Um, if you're a multiple content teacher, maybe you want a folder for all of your math stuff. Maybe you want a folder for all of your social studies links. Maybe you want a folder for all of the professional development that you are planning on attending this summer or into the next school year. Or maybe you want to have a bookmark or a folder that has quick links to each of your Google Classrooms. You could go crazy with this organization. And, and yes, I'm gonna answer your question now. You can put folders inside of folders on the bookmarks bar. There, I've said it. I might be a person that uses that. And you say, well, come on, Sarah, just tell me, just show me. So I'm going to do a two finger tap on that bookmarks bar right here. And notice I can open up all three of my uh, bookmarks that I have on here. I can open them in a new window. Uh, I can open them in an incognito window and down here I can add a page to my bookmarks bar and there's my add folder. So here's my new folder. I'm obviously going to use social studies because that was my content. Uh, I'm going to click save and there's my folder. Super easy, super simple. Um, the only thing I could say that's slightly a negative but it's not really a negative because I don't have to then think that I need to spend time on it is you can't change the colors of these folders they're just gonna be gray and that's okay it's perfectly okay now uh, if you joined us for classroom and for drive we talked about the added ability to include icons or emojis to the titles of documents and to folders in drive and in classroom and how powerful that can be for students. I think it, there's a lot of power for us as teachers as well. So if you have a folder for social studies, if you want to find, remember that emoji, copy paste emoji, copy paste emoji, let's go there. Let's find a globe today, let's find a globe. Just gonna copy that one. Now what I'm gonna do up here is I'm not gonna click on my folder, I'm gonna do a two finger tap on my folder and then I'm going to go to the rename option. Because remember the folder isn't exactly a bookmark, it's, it's a location for multiple bookmarks to go in there. And then I'm gonna put it in front of the title, I'm gonna paste it in there. And let's check this out. And maybe I decide instead of social studies, I just wanna do SS because so social studies is to me and I click save there you have it you can even add emojis on your folder name to better help you visualize what goes into that folder amazing can we say amazing now I don't have a tremendous amount of bookmarks on this particular account so what I'm going to do oh and Sarah did uh, am I hearing Sarah how do you can we save the emoji the copy paste emoji website sure can 
you're going to probably want to go back to the beginning, right? I'm going to use those navigation keys. I'm going to go back to their homepage and I'm going to click on that star. Do we need all those words there? We just need the cute words, right? So we're going to delete, 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 get back to, and actually I'm just gonna get rid of the whole name and I'm going to say done. And you see that? How it's slightly bigger than the actual emoji. And if you hover over it, again, remember hover over things. Most of the time it's gonna tell you, it actually does tell you what the, the URL is that reminds you. So yeah, now you have real super quick access to copy paste emoji. Pretty amazing. Now I'm going to jump back over into my other account so that you can see that I've got a whole lot more. I'm going to just show you like where if you're starting out and now let's go to a person has, I don't know, a lot of bookmarks, right? Maybe this is you and you maybe have so many bookmarks that you can't see them all. And you have, you've bookmarked them. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't stress about that. You see the little carrots over here to the right, the two little right arrow carrots. I don't, I call them carrots. Um, that tells you that you have a list of additional bookmarks. A lot of times I'll have teachers go, yeah, I'm pretty sure I bookmarked that at, at some point And I just, I don't know where it is and click on the little carrot and you get this list. Now this is not, this is not a bad thing at all. Not at all. You have to go back to what works best for your brain. Is it better to have the folders to where if you click on the folders or hover over the folders that you can see all of these bookmarks inside? Oh look, Educator Alex. It's a great website. You might wanna to go to Educator Alexander. It's great, I bookmarked it. It's in my Good Sites folder. It, that might work for you. Having them in one big long list over here might work for you. I have seen teachers to where this list actually has a scroll bar because I have so many bookmarks. If you start getting into that world where this particular list goes down and down and down and down and down and down and down, I don't know that that's gonna be super efficient for you. You might wanna start thinking about a couple of folders just to start grouping them together. Again, dividing it out a little bit can help your brain quickly and more efficiently find what you're looking for instead of just scrolling because these are just adding in bookmarks they're just going to keep popping to the bottom and the bottom and the bottom so it's kind of like a timestamp order and what i see a lot is teachers are not interested in managing these so they never come back so if they never care about this uh, ux design theory anymore it'll stay there for forever when it's super easy you do a two finger click on it or a right click if you're using a mouse and you just hit the delete button and it's gone. I try to do that often with my bookmarks, not every day or anything, but every couple of months I might peek and see if I have additional bookmarks hanging out down here and seeing if I need to move them around. Because again, I like to have things relatively well organized. I'm not going to tell you I'm perfect, but again, relatively well organized. And then if I do have additional bookmarks, I'm not scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and, and spending a lot of time doing that. I keep them organized. Um, oh, and by the way, in case you weren't aware, if you needed to, from your, your little drop down menu, you can click and you can drag and notice you can put it in whatever order you want. You can also tuck it into a folder. And now it doesn't show up over here. Now it's in my Good Sites folder. Another great tip to help stay a little bit more organized and a little bit more efficient. All right, so we've talked about how to do it using just the, the icon, using folders. I've got a little video tucked in there. Um, love bookmarks and it ties in very nicely to um, the house up here at the top because that's like a big giant bookmark in itself. Questions? Are we good? I'm gonna take a real quick drink. We are good. People are putting really nice tips and how they use bookmarks and in the chat and we are doing well. Awesome. All right, so let's talk about an easy one, shall we? Let's talk about the Omnibox, the URL. All right, so this is 
obviously kind of like the backbone of everything. Uh, this is where you type in to get from one place to another, or my favorite is you can just open up a new tab and you could do a search. Educator. Gotta spell things, Alexander. And notice it, it does a little bit of that predictive text. And again, I always think about how this works for teachers, but I think about how it works well for students. So if students are doing reports, they, they might think that they have to come down and do a search in here, but you can just do a search all the way up there at the top. So if you're looking for something and you start typing it in, it's gonna do some of that predictive text. You don't have to keep typing. It makes it very simple. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that search and look what it brings up. What an amazing website. It's all right there. I can come here, I can sign up for upcoming events, I can subscribe to her newsletter. It's amazing the simplicity that is built right in. Don't have to open up a new tab if I want to. I just come up here and maybe I am looking for Twitter. Come here, it gives me my searches, I click on it, and boom, there I am. I'm on my Twitter. I could sign up for Twitter. I could tweet at Ed Alex, Educator Alexander, Educator Alex. Sorry, and Kiefer SJ, my Twitter handle. Uh, you tweet at us, share all the, the cool things out that you're learning. We'd love to hear more of them. Um, and all of that packed right in there in, in the URL or in the Omnibox, it's, it's all right there. It's awesome. Now, I've got a couple of tips for you. There's a little magnifying glass in my picture. Notice it doesn't show up up here. This is great, again, for students. It's also great for those of us that maybe um, have some visual needs. And I'm, I'm not talking about crazy wild, but I wear glasses and sometimes things on the computer can get really small. So you can zoom in. It's awesome. And it's very simple. Again, keyboard shortcuts. You got them, you got your little post note, you might wanna add these to it. I've got little pictures down here. So when I'm in a classroom and I'm showing students how to do this, I always try to tag in something that they're familiar with. So I say, okay, think about math class. And math teachers out there are rejoicing. They're like, oh, yay. Don't get too excited. It's pretty simple. But if you want to make something bigger, what do you do to it? The kids are usually very quick to say, oh, you add, right? To make things bigger, you add. Okay, so what's the symbol for that? And they're like, oh, it's the plus sign. Mike, you got it. So find that control key, you know, CTRL, like look at it, it's kind of at the bottom. You actually have two of them, you know, guide the kids to those keys. Press and hold your control key and then find your plus sign. You know, click on that plus sign. And I should probably go to a different website so you can see this happen better. Control and then plus and plus again. And then the kids are going to go and they're going to go all the way, I think, to 500% magnification. And they're going to be like, oh, wow, this is great. Well, yes, it is. And then half of them will be like, but now it's so big, I can't see anything. And that's when you say, okay, deep, take a deep breath again. Like, let's go back to math class. Okay, so you've, you add to get bigger. How do you make things smaller? And because they now have that association, they're like, oh, you subtract. I like guess which key you're gonna use. You know, so it, it helps your brain understand and remember. So you do the control key and you hit minus again. And notice it's showing you the percentage. We're at 110%. And then if you notice very quickly, it goes away that plus minus. If you can, you can click on that. Or now that you see that little magnifying glass, if you click on it, you can always now come down to the reset button and it will take you back to that 100%. Um, and this has worked very well for a lot of our students that have visual impairments, and you may have them too. We don't have a lot of them, but I do have a few students that do have some visual impairments, and they're standard, like we go into their settings and we do some standard setting for them, but then they always know how to zoom in and zoom out. This also works great on websites that have pictures that you want the students to see, but maybe when they put it on their website, the pictures aren't super large. 
teach the kids how they can zoom in and see it better. Or sometimes students forget their glasses at home. It happens. Um, and it, what they can do to kind of help accommodate for that on a, instead of like having to go sit in the office or whatever, the zooming in and out too can be very helpful. I know a lot of times just maybe because I'm getting older or maybe just because it's a little bit more comfortable zooming in and making the text a little bit larger, it helps. Uh, it, it's, it's great. And then sometimes zooming out because maybe you want to get a bigger picture of what's on your screen. The zooming out works as well. Teach the kids how to use this and teach them that it's a tool and not a toy. And they won't sit there and play with it a lot. That's the other fear that I think a lot of teachers have is if we start teaching them how to do some of these things, they're going to sit there and they're going to play with them. And I would say build that in. If you anticipate your students because of the kids sitting in front of you are that kind of natured kids, then say, okay, we're going to learn how to zoom in and zoom out. And I'm going to give you time for that. And then we're going to talk about maybe why you would use that, when you would use that, and then build that out into that teachable time and give the kids the real supports and the real explanations. And, and don't sit there and, and police them on it. I have students that really like to have things zoomed in, in and zoomed out and you know they come to me and it's magnified so big and do, do you really like that and oh yeah oh yeah I'm like okay letting them be the judge of it unless it's truly impacting the learning this is one of those that I just kind of I kind of stay away from them I let it go and I will say to students if they have it zoomed so far out that it's so incredibly tiny that it's very uncomfortable for me to read it, I do step in and say, you know, like, this is not a good thought to have when you're working on your computer. You need to help the, the students understand the boundaries and the long-term ramifications if they're constantly straining to see these things. It doesn't need to be a, an unforced setting. It needs to be that conversation. Have these conversations with the kids. Teach them appropriate behaviors that will pay off in the long run. All right. So my, my rant about that is over. Um, it talks a little bit about bookmarking here too. And, and that's because maybe you came to this slide before you went to the other one. So we, we go back and forth sometimes and it's kind of like a little play area right now. So again, I have it down here, teach the kids, have them put post-it notes there, let them use these keyboard shortcuts to help out. It's wonderful. All right, so we've done the stoplight, we've done the tabs, we've done navigation, the URL, the Omnibox, the bookmarks bar. Uh, we talked about the profile picture. We have two areas left. We've got extensions and we have settings. Both of them we could get kind of lost in for a period of time. So I really want to cover how to add extensions and based on the number of questions, if we get questions about extensions, maybe we'll stay in it a little bit longer. But settings is really probably a bigger powerhouse of where we could spend more of our time. So let's travel over to extensions, shall we? All right, so there's two really major pieces to the extensions, managing them and adding them. On this account, I don't have any extensions. So this is a, like a brand new, fresh account. No extensions are added. And so obviously we're gonna wanna start with the finding and adding. The managing comes into play when you actually do have extensions. So on my other account right up here, you can see that I have a bunch of extensions up here. We'll get there in a moment. Let's go add some extensions. Because I know that's a place where a lot of people go I don't know how to do this, but you talk about some of these great extensions. How do we add them on? All right, so one word of caution here. This is one of those places that school domains can prevent people from doing on their own. So if you are unable to do this, you'll need to switch to a personal account or just watch this part of it and then later try it on a personal account. But I will say, don't cry and don't stress out about that, that you can't add them to your school account. Use this as a learning opportunity. If you can add the extension to your personal account, 
and you actually play with it for a while, and I don't mean for five minutes, I mean for maybe a couple of days, really see the ins and the outs of that extension. When you go to request that from your tech director or your Google admin or your principal or whomever you have to go to to request these extensions to be added, you can go to them with an informed mind. You can say, I would like the Screencastify extension because I can do X, Y, and Z with this. I think it will be really helpful for myself and for other teachers. Don't put your blinders on and think like this is only going to be best for you because if it's beneficial for you, it's probably going to be beneficial for other people. And what better way to help fellow educators than to share out the good things that you find? And extensions are one of those things too. I get that question and Desiree, I'm sure that you get this question like all of the time. What extensions work with this? And I think that was something that I tried to tuck in with each of the sheets and Chrome and sheets and docs and slides what extensions, what add-ons, you know, what applications do work really well with all of this kind of stuff. It's just something that people are really interested in. And if you're not aware what extensions are, they're tiny little software packages that kind of do something more to your, to your Chrome experience. Um, inside of sheets and docs and slides, you can do add-ons that work inside of that particular application. These extensions can also do things to help with those particular applications, but extensions are gonna work across your whole Chrome browser. It's also important to note, extensions do not work on phones, they don't work on tablets, um, they only work on your computers, your Chromebooks, they're not gonna work on your smaller individual devices like that. So keep that in mind, even if you add them onto your account, you can't pull up your phone and think that you're gonna be able to do the Screencastify extension. You're not. All right, so enough talking, enough yapping, Sarah, right? So remember I left this Chrome Web Store open? I'm gonna come back to it. Right now it's on the themes section. And remember if I said tuck this away in your brain, right above it is the extensions. This is a pretty cool place to go. It can also be very overwhelming because there's so much out there. Google has recently kind of like locked down and kind of enforced a lot more security and a lot more vetting of their extensions and their add-ons. So we're going to browse for and find some extensions. I know that a lot of people are kind of revamping their trainings because some extensions are no longer available. I had one that was a, uh, it would speak, select and speak. When we looked it up the other day, it doesn't even appear anymore. Um, developers have to keep up with Google's requirements or their extensions get kicked out. So don't be shocked if you go one day and your extension is completely gone. That just means that the person that created it probably isn't keeping up with it. And it's probably not something that you wanna keep using anyway. So there's just a few of the things. Okay, so right here you can see it's staying at home as a category, view all, you can click on, it's gonna give you a whole lot more. And as you scroll through, it's gonna give you different categories. Find something that you like, or if you know right away something that you're looking for. Anybody wanna guess what extension I'm gonna look for first? It's probably one of my favorites and it really, doesn't serve exact purposes other than it makes things, it helps me make things look a lot prettier. If you guessed color pick, oops, pick eyedropper, you guessed right. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm going to scroll through because these don't look like the ones I was looking for and I'm going to say it's probably because Oh, this is always the, the tricky one. I'm going to cheat and I'm going to come over here. What does it say? Color pick eyedropper. Oh, don't tell me you've gone away. Oh, that kind of makes me sad. All right, we'll look for the hour. What I've been finding is if they go away, they usually come back within two weeks because I think Google is asking them to update. And if they don't do it by a certain date, I'm guessing it's taking them off. But using about two weeks, they usually come on back. Desiree, color pick eyedropper is like one of my favorite. I, it's on my list as well. I can't, I can't do without it. I need that. 
All right, mourn for a minute. Okay, and now get over it. So let's look for Screencastify, which is another amazing Screencastify. You there know, it is. Hey guys, is when you do download the extension, the good thing is once you download it, you kind of have it. Yeah. Well, we can still use Color Pick Eyedropper, but it doesn't mean it's in the store anymore. So hopefully it comes on back in about two weeks. Oh, Desiree, I hope it does. Oh, anyway, I'll, I'll move on. All right, so see, like I don't even get everything that I want. Screencastify, it's an amazing, amazing extension. Uh, it does have a free version and then it has an upgrade version that you can pay for. So I, I know that I want to add Screencastify. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And then here's where I think people get a little bit too click happy. Take a second and, and look at all of this information up here. This really says a lot about your extensions. Sarah, I don't want to interrupt you, but it is still in the Chrome store. <gasps> it is? Yeah, just went, dropper? Click, yeah, just went clicked on my extensions list on my website and it's still there. <gasps> Good. I must, was I spelling? I could have been spelling something wrong. I never get that one right. I always have to go and look for it. Okay. Whew. Thank you, Desiree. Now I don't have to cry. It's still there. Yay. All right, but when you um, click on an extension that you think that you might want, check out, check out this information right here. Out of almost 11,000 people, they're rating it a four out of five stars. That should tell you something. Four million plus users. That should tell you something. It runs offline. Hello, that's awesome. Works with Google Drive. Fantastic. For those of us that are, are Google people, right? All of those numbers that are right here can also tell you the likelihood that it's going to stick around as well. If, if there were four users and it was a one out of four stars, you might not, I'm not saying that all of them are going to be bad in that situation, but those might be the ones that you let other people test out and you let other people work out the kinks to them and let other people find out what works and what doesn't work with them. Um, Let's make smart decisions. We also don't want to add 8,000 extensions that maybe don't even mean anything. All right. So another really cool thing is down here in the center of the screen, they'll probably give you some sort of quick visualization as to what the extension can do or what it looks like. I know this is an extension that I want, so I'm going to go ahead and click this blue button, add to Chrome. Um, you're going to get a little pop-up like that. I'm going to give it a second and then voila, there it is right up there in my top right corner. It even gives you that little confirmation message. So I can just close that out. I'm not going to actually go ahead and initiate my account with Screencastify right now. I just wanted to make sure that I have that extension so that when I'm ready to use it, it's there. And then you might go, oh, Sarah, it's gone. It's gone. It's not, it's not there anymore. That's okay. Take a deep breath. Deep breath. You notice that there is something up there that wasn't there before. It's a little puzzle piece. So what you can do now is click on that little puzzle piece and you can see this is going to give you your list. So once you start adding on a bunch of extensions, you're going to get this list and it allows for you to turn extensions on and off without deleting them or having to re-add them then to your account. And it saves some space, but it also, Again, the more extensions you have, the slower your computer is going to run. So if you're not using extensions all of the time, you might want to think about this. So pinning it, very simple. It's gray right now, so it doesn't show up. Once I click on it and that pin turns blue, it now is up there. So easy enough. There you go. The extension is up there, and then when you're ready to use it, you can just click on it. Let's go back and add another extension. What if we add the Keep extension? Google Keep is an, uh, is an app that we'll talk about next Friday, but they do have a Google Keep Chrome extension. You're ready to add it right here. Notice it shows that add to Chrome. Again, 7,000 plus users are rating it a four out of five. It's probably pretty good. It's offered by Google. I'm going to go ahead and add it because I know that it's a good extension. Go ahead and click add extension. Let it do its thing right there. 
And again, it goes away. So you might have to come down, click that little pin and you're good. You could do this over and over again, right? You could add on as many extensions as you want. And Desiree, I'm, I'm sure you're probably popping into the chat the link to your page where you have extensions listed that are great resources. I also have a wakelet that I've collected a bunch of different extension sites and, and suggestions um, as well that I've tucked in on the last page on my resources. Now, a cool thing about extensions, and I'm gonna go into my other account because I have far more, it looks a little bit better. I have about, what, 10 of them up here. You can rearrange them just like your bookmarks. So if you want your Screencastify extension to be the first one, you can click and you can drag it and put it in the order that you want. Maybe you want this extension to go all the way to the end. Maybe you want this new extension to come forward. Maybe you want cite this for me to go backward. Maybe you want color, like, do you see how it, it works the same as the dragging and the dropping? You can put it in whatever order that you want. And if you're not currently using, just like I showed you before, if it's got the blue pin there, maybe you don't want Pinterest on there anymore and you just make that pin go gray, you're not deleting it, it's just not showing up any longer. Now extensions, we could sit here and we could go through again and we could add a lot of extensions. We could talk a lot about ex extensions. Extensions can also be a very personal thing. Um, some people like certain extensions, some people don't. I would look at Desiree's list, I would look at my wakelet and kind of make some judgments for yourself. There are some extensions that are a cost thing. I don't think that by and large too many of them are. Most extensions are pretty free, um, but sometimes they have accounts that are required to use that do cost. So that's another thing to keep in mind. It's also why a lot of districts restrict their students from being able to, to just randomly add extensions on. All right, any other extension questions? Um, I'm hoping that people are putting in some extensions maybe that they really like, that is really helpful. I will say the one extension that I've heard that Google is putting in their graveyard that I'm hoping a lot of these teachers in here maybe won't be devastated like I was, but it's the share to classroom extension. Google is turning that one off in the middle of August. I was pretty bummed about that. Um, and I, I believe it is true. I don't think that this is just one of those things that's passed around to freak people out. It is actually true because I wasn't sure if it was true either, but when I taught extensions yesterday, if you click on it, it actually says that it's going away. August 15th, I think is the date. And I know a lot of people are pretty sad. I'm, I'm sad about it because that was such a great extension. It is a great extension. So that's like what Desiree was saying that, you know, sometimes they go away and they come back. That was a Google extension and Google has put out that they're no longer going to support it. So unfortunately, I think that's one that's going by the wayside people. So sorry about that one. Hate to be the bearer of bad news. All right. So we're going to jump into the last big chunk, which is also it's, it's like you hear settings and sometimes you think like the just the boring stuff and you know only the nerdy people go there but the settings in chrome can really help you become more efficient help you become uh, better organized there's a lot there and it also happens to be my favorite little icon the world's skinniest snowman so i found a cute little snowman that i added on in the title but he does look like a little super skinny snowman and he appears in a lot of different places and in this one he packs a lot in here so while he looks skinny he's got a lot going on and if you look I've, I've highlighted a few things some of them that we've talked about we've talked about history we've talked about bookmarks so this one will link you back to that bookmark slide and the history one we talked about at the beginning where it, it helps you if you looked at something a week ago, or maybe you have students that their history might be a worthwhile spot to be looking in. Just saying, 
might be something that is um, in your teacher bag of tricks. Know that you can do that. Um, but this is really the, the biggie for Chrome. Yes, you can change colors with your themes. Yes, you can add emojis and with your folders and your names of bookmarks and all that kind of stuff. But your settings is really big. And we've already dipped our toes in it when we were talking about the home page. Um, and before we jump in there, I guess I should do this incognito window just so that we don't run out of time. Again, a setting that schools can restrict. Students don't necessarily need to ever be incognito, so a lot of schools do turn that off. I'm not saying that every school does, uh, but it allows you to browse privately, which means it's not going to do as much of the tracking and things like that. Um, my favorite use that I hear about incognito it has nothing to do with school. It's around the holidays and maybe you and your spouse share a computer and you don't want your spouse to know what it is that you're searching for them for Christmas or for a birthday present or something like that. So I've heard, you know, a lot of people will pull open uh, an incognito window so that the spouse can't accidentally find what they were looking for. So it, it's got its pros and its cons. The biggest way that I use it personally is if I want to make sure that the resource that I'm sharing out, most likely to parents or to a larger audience of teachers, I'll use the incognito window to make sure that I've got my share settings correct. Because one of the most frustrating pieces, and it's embarrassing for me, is when I share something out and then nobody can see it because I didn't do the right share settings. And it happens. I'm not perfect, um, but that's also where the incognito window is really super helpful. I'll pop open an incognito window, I'll paste in the link, and if I can get it to work the way I intended it for it to work, I know that I've got it. Because that incognito window means I'm not logged into any of my profiles. So I'm not in my test account, I'm not in my Sarah home account, I'm not in my Sarah school account, I'm not in my Sarah Google trainer account. I'm in a guest window, if you will, but I'm not opening up a lot of guest windows because then that can get confusing. So that's really my biggest use of incognito windows to check the sharing permissions because I'm sharing it out with an audience that may or may not be logged into any kind of a Google account. All right, so here we go. Here's the biggie. Let's jump into settings. So click on your world's skinniest snowman and then see how it mimics the, the screen that I've got over here. Settings is all the way down here. I'm gonna click on it and it's gonna open back up and settings will have that blue bar across the top. Now, the really cool thing about settings is that there is so much there. And then the really overwhelming thing about settings is that there's so much there. But what they've done, and this is a, in the last year, so if, if you've seen this before, you've seen settings and you say, well, this kind of looks different, Google's always updating, they're always making improvements. And sometimes it's just an adjustment. But I love that they have these little categories over here on the far left. So if you want to real quick jump to the appearance of your, of your Chrome, you can click on that. If you want to jump very quickly to back up to you and Google, you can do that. If you want to click to on startup and you're like, well, what does that even mean? You can click on that. And you notice advanced down here has the little shark tooth. Remember what I always say about the shark tooth? Click on them. We'll give you some more options. And then here's a real quick link out to extensions. But let's start at the top. Now, there's no way possible I'm going to get through every single setting and every single option that you can inside your settings with Chrome. I don't recommend you go in and just start randomly changing things either. But what you can do is if something sounds interesting, copy and paste it out in a new tab. Do a little bit of investigating. What does it mean to sync and Google services? What does that mean? If you're not sure and you're not comfortable enough to click on it and look at it right here, open up a new tab and do a little bit of research. On the other hand, if you come into your settings and you have that idea like what we had with the home page, and you're searching for something specific, use this search up here. This is more often than not how I find what I'm looking for in settings instead of scrolling through anywhere. So again, let's look for that home 
and I love how it highlights it in yellow. Um, another idea that you might look for is where it says like on startup. I'm just going to type in the word start and notice it takes you right to this section right down here. So while we're here, let's take a look at what this is. And again, think about this on startup. So when it's a fresh session of Chrome, not the times that you've just clicked that red button and you've closed out the window. When it's a fresh session of Chrome, I am telling my computer to open up to this one particular website. But notice it says or set of pages. So for teachers, a lot of the time, when you open up Chrome, I'm going to guess that you probably would love to be able to see your email, your calendar, and maybe your school website or a, a third site of some sort that you, your grade book, something that you regularly use. You can tell Chrome that every time you start a fresh session, you want those three sites to show up automatically. It's amazing. And yes, you could bookmark them and then you could go up and you could click on them. And maybe you have one of them set as your homepage. But on startup, because number one, that keeps Chrome up to date, but then it pops you right to where you needed to be. I love this. I think more teachers need to take advantage of this. We're being pulled in 25,000 different directions where we can consolidate and make things more efficient. Let's do that. So let's say I want to add a couple of pages on down here. You can either add a new page and type it in, or my favorite is you go to that particular site and I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come back to my settings. I'm gonna add a new page, paste it in there, add it on. So my email is gonna open, my Google Classroom page is gonna open, and then maybe I want this website to also automatically open. Pretend like maybe it's your grade book or maybe it's your Google Calendar or it's your district website. So the next time that I completely quit out of Chrome and I open it back up, these three pages are gonna automatically open for me. And whatever you have here, think about this, like if you were to kind of shift them up there, this is gonna be the very first tab classes would be here and then the tech you can do can be your third tab you can have more than that as your tabs i've had it out to be as many as five but what i found was it it slows down the whole loading process so where i thought i was gaining some time i ended up opening chrome and then sitting and waiting for a minute or so for all five of those pages to load so think carefully put a little bit of thought into it and again, these are things that you can adjust. Another cool option right here on startup, and I have found this to be beneficial as well, is this continue where you left off option. So if I click on that, it's gonna change and notice those specific pages go away. But the idea behind this now is when I quit out of Chrome, the next time I open up, like if I left all of these tabs open, the next time I open up Chrome, all six of these tabs, are gonna show back up. So it literally is right where I left off. It's pretty nice. Or click the on uh, open with a new tab, which is just, this guy is just gonna be the tab that opens up and maybe that's your preference. Again, there's no right or wrong here. Just think realistically about what your day actually looks like when you go through and you make some of these settings. Now let's go back to you and Google, start back towards the top. Um, these are your very sensitive settings right here, saved passwords. If you choose to add in payment methods, which probably on school accounts, I'm going to guess maybe is not an area that you use, but think about for your personal accounts as well. And then if you've got saved addresses in there as well, that area right here is a, a pretty sensitive place. And it's probably one where you, you do want to think a little bit carefully. I don't have a lot of saved passwords in this account, I actually don't have any. Um, but please know that you can turn off the ability in your account to save these passwords and you can turn off the auto sign in. I do think that these are very, very powerful and very helpful in time saving, but you always have to kind of weigh your personal preferences with 
the, the time factor, right? So keep those, I, those couple of things in mind. Um, and then when you look down here, if you have saved passwords, they're gonna show up here, which I'm gonna guess for most of us, we probably have, you know, many saved passwords. I know my list is quite exhaustive. And rest assured, if I were able to, and I, I'm, I'm not going to obviously because I'm, I, I know that that's not best practice, but it would have the website over here, it would have your username here, and then instead of just showing you your passwords, they will show up as the dots. So if somebody is looking like over your shoulder, don't worry, they're not gonna actually see your passwords. But again, this is an area where I wouldn't be pulling this up in, in large group settings. Um, you can also see the sites where you've told your computer you never want it to save. Um, I, I, a lot of people might not want them to save. And again, this goes back more into your personal world like banking institutions or you know, credit card information. Maybe you tell your browser to never save that information. Again, you're always having to balance that it's quicker, is it secure enough for yourself? Keep those things in mind. Um, going back, you could do a little safety check. Um, this privacy and security area, again, there is a, a fine line or there's a balance between options that your district might restrict from happening versus things that you can choose to be doing. On the appearance, this is a place that we've talked about a few times. You can go ahead and open up the Chrome Web Store right from here. We've already set our home button. You can actually turn off the bookmarks bar right here if you want to just turn that little toggle switch. It does give you a little bit more space. But again, I balance that out with, I, I really like having those bookmarks. It's very quick and easy for me. So I'm going to turn it back on. And notice, it doesn't delete your bookmarks if that gets turned off. They came right back. I just turned off being able to see them versus them being on for you know quick access or turning off for a little bit more space. And there might be times where you want to turn it off. Maybe you've got your computer projected on the screen or you're doing a video conference and you don't want everybody to see all the bookmarks that you have. Turn it off. Um, here's where you get into some of the super customizable spots. And if you remember, I was talking about some of our visually impaired students. Instead of their page being at 100%, you can make the default something else. And again, you, you'd need to talk to their uh, intervention specialist or their vision specialist as to what the best option is for that student. And if they don't give you like a specified number, maybe you do leave it at 100%, but you really do some instruction with that student to show them how to do the control plus and control minus to make it bigger and smaller. A um, couple more options there in the appearance section. And then down here, this is a, a goofy one that seems kind of strange, but I've, I've had this happen to where teachers come to me and they say, Sarah, I don't get this Google as my, as my page anymore. It's like Hotmail or it's Yahoo or it's something else. And I don't, I don't know what's going on. And, and what we've found is it's actually something in the settings that they have somehow changed. I can't even tell you how. Um, but they've changed it to something else. Maybe on purpose, most likely it's just been on accident, but you can tell it to come back and use Google again. And then you can also manage your search engines down here. And then as you scroll down, you notice like, oh, I'm at the bottom of the page. And I say, no, 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 you're not. You're not done. See that little advanced with the shark tooth? He's here as well as over here. So click on that and you get a whole new list. You see all these categories over here? And these are probably like your lesser needed or lesser dependent on settings. However, think about your community, think about the students that you serve, think about maybe you're in your own personal life. Um, you can make some changes as far as the language. Obviously I'm an English speaker, so I have that set. You can make those changes and you can even customize when you use uh, translating abilities within Google to what it's translating these pages as. You can add languages, you can turn off the ability. Uh, for uh, schools that have a lot of students that use English as a second language, 
maybe having something along these lines or being aware that this is there can go a long way in helping those students become adjusted or helping the parents um, better support their student at home. So keep these things maybe in the back of your head and use them when it's appropriate. Not everybody needs to have that, but maybe some students do. And then you come down, you got your spell check. Uh, where are your items downloading to? This is constantly uh, a, a hiccup for a lot of teachers. Like, well, I downloaded it, but I don't know where it goes. It tells you right here in your downloads. For me on this computer, it's, it's going to this user slash Sarah Kiefer slash downloads, but I can change it. See how I say like a lot of these are not things that you're gonna keep coming back into and changing regularly, but once you get it set up and you're comfortable with it, just know that it's there and you can adjust it if you would like. Howard, right, can I say two things? Sure. One is about what you talked about earlier about sometimes the, um, the Omnibox searching other sites and, you know, people are like, how did that change? Well, a lot of the sites that you go to that give you little viruses, like small V viruses, that's what it will do. It will change it and have it going to all kind of weird sites when it comes up. So that's one of the things now you know where to go to check that. Sometimes it's an easy fix. Sometimes you have to go a little bit deeper to fix it. But that's why that changes sometimes. It's a, it's a little mini annoying virus type thing. And with the downloads change, that's one of my favorites. But you do have to do it per computer. So just know that sometimes you'll go to a different computer and it won't download in the same place. And you're like, ah! So you may have to go and change it if you go to a different computer. So Desiree, when you were talking about the viruses, are, are you meaning that maybe people click on things that they shouldn't be clicking on and goofy things happen as a result? I think so, Sarah. I think so. A little bit of digital citizenship there, right? People don't click on things if you have no idea what it is. A a ask somebody that you trust. Don't You get an email from somebody that you absolutely do not recognize, maybe that's one that you don't open. Or even right? if you recognize the name but the message is crazy, check the email address. I promise you I am not in Peru and I do not need you to go buy 10 gift cards. I promise you that. So even if you see that coming, and she's laughing because we, we get this. So if you see yeah. it coming from Dr. Desiree Alexander, look at the email address. If the email address is weird, that is not me. And, and Desiree, they've gotten a lot craftier, these, these people that I think if they use their power for good, they get a little bit crafty and it's not something that maybe gonna immediately smack you in the face that maybe it's, they change instead of .com, it's .net or like, so people just don't, don't be so click happy that you end up oopsing. And a lot of the times you can fix it, yes. But sometimes like you could get yourself into problems and. And just ask yourself, does it make sense? So if somebody emails you and says, I need you to contact me, I'm in a meeting would they do that? Like, would they honestly like not tell you what they need, say something so weird? And it's one of those things where, you know, maybe they did do it, but look at the, like, that's the first place your eye should go is what, because they can use your signature and everything. Look at the email address. What does that email address say? Is it normal? And then if you don't mind, contact that person and tell them they probably want to change their password. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also one of those, like you're saying, contact that person because a lot of the times they're not aware that that's happening. And, you know, that's, that's their name that this is all attached to. And that's a problem because if, if you're getting something, I'm going to guess more people out there are getting that same odd, strange message. So, yeah, and most of the time, you know, you, maybe you read that email, call them or something, you know, don't just kind of dismiss this. So keep, keep those things in mind. And then as we are getting very close, I can see on my scroll bar, um, we are getting very close to the bottom here. Here is a great spot, this accessibilities feature right here. Um, and you can see right here, it gives you these little pop-outs, these little, um, they're not quite sharrows, but they're like out arrows and they, they take you out somewhere. So they're taking you somewhere to give you better information about this or linking you to a spot that's going to help you. 
there are a lot of great accessibility features. And if you have students that use Chromebooks, there are a lot of very good built-in features. So think about using some of those and not always because students have IEPs and adults, there's a lot of things that I could use that are considered accessibility features that it's not because I have any kind of paper behind my name, but it's because it's, it's there, it's an option and it, it can help. It can help us be more efficient, help us be uh, better digital users or, or what have you, or it can help us support our students in a better way. Um, and if you're in settings, I love the search bar, but if you have no idea what hardware acceleration is, please don't go in there and start clicking around on some of these things. Like I said before, maybe copy and paste that into a new tab and, and do a little bit of investigating or call up your neighborhood friendly tech director and ask them these questions before you just start adjusting stuff. So the final thing that I will share with you, again, you have this presentation, you can click around, you can look at this stuff. I do have a blog post about five settings that you can do. We've covered quite a few of them. Um, and then the resources at the very end. I've got a few places to where you can go to the help center, you can get some additional training with Chrome. Here's a quick link to the Chrome web store. And then like I mentioned, I have two wakelets. One is about Chrome and then one wakelet that talks more about extensions and add-ons. And then I also tucked in here because I did talk several times about different keyboard shortcuts. I've added in a link to a great website that gives a ton of websites. And it's not just for Chrome. There's a section on Chrome, but it's also keyboard shortcuts that work for a lot of different things. So with that, I'm gonna wrap it up. I finished three minutes under. So Desiree, any questions or anything that I can help with to wrap this up? No questions. Everything has um, gone pretty smoothly. Any questions either I answered or other people answered and gave awesome. and all that good stuff. Um, so no, nothing from us. And I do have a quick announcement after you are done. All right, I'll go ahead and stop sharing. And like Desiree said, she's recorded this, so it'll come out. She'll also include the link. Um, email us, we both, you know, tweet at us. That's always, that's always exciting, you know, to make these new connections, follow us. And um, so thank you again for coming. Those of you that this is number seven, we've got one more next Friday, we'll be eight. And um, if you come, awesome. If you can make it, we're just gonna talk about a whole bunch of different other Google things. So join us next Friday and big shout out to Desiree once again, putting up with me for the seventh time for two hours. You rocked it. Thank you so much for being there. You know, you're awesome. Um, I do have a quick announcement about the Bitmoji webinar. Oh, I'm trying to get away from it, from the chat. So the Bitmoji webinar has been announced. It's going to be on Saturday, August 29th from 11 to noon central time. So that's kind of our regular um, webinar spot. And you can sign up now on the website. So I just want to kind of point that out. It just, flyer just dropped and came out. We also have a couple of more. We have one on Microsoft Teams we're getting scheduled and we have one on differentiation using Google and I know everybody's gonna want that. So that's gonna be in September. So maybe like when most of us are maybe going back. So there you go, Sarah. Thank you so much. I think I'm gonna cry on the last one, Sarah, but Sarah, thank you so much for everything. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I was, I was thinking about that today too, and I was like, I'm not a real big crier, but I mean, that'll be our eighth in this series, but we've done one before, so that'll actually be number nine. And then we'll have 10 in September. I know we'll come back, but yes. <laughs> oh, I might cry. I know, I think I'm gonna tear up. But okay, not right now, it's not yet, not yet. Join us for next week's. We have a bunch of stuff next week, so definitely check out the website. And thank you so much, Sarah. Oh, thank you, Desiree. Thank you. Sarah. Oh, thank you, Desiree. Thank you.